Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back, Glenn. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me back again. Of course, man. Always good to have you. And let's quickly address the last video, because we made a promise that anything over 5,000 likes, Glenn, you're going to have to eat a strobe waffle. Yeah, that would be a problem. I like strobe waffles, so come on. <laughs> Glenn's hungry, you guys. Don't forget to go over <laughs> to the last video. Take a watch if you haven't already, and, and, uh, and leave a like. And, and we're going to double down. Same goes for this video, except I'm on the hook this time. So uh, make us both fat in the off-season, help support the channel. And with that said, let's, let's get into today's race, because this is a pretty exciting one. This is the Open Military Championship. But Glenn, you're not in the military. No, man, I'm a police officer, but we, we got invited with a few others to race this race. And I was really excited to race over here, and I wanted to win this, this championship of, of theirs, man. How cool would that be? You, you, you're not in the military, you show up as a policeman to beat the military in their own race. So Glenn was really going really good, really fit, good form this time of year, making some I insane numbers, really impressed with the amount of power that you're able to do, man. And, yeah, thanks, um, man. and this course, this course is solid. It's another one of these closed courses. It's only for bikes. It's good pavement, rolling, windy. What else, what else is there to say, Glenn? Yeah, it, it's got, it got everything in it and the weather was just awesome. So yeah, let's talk about the race, man. All right, but first real quick, wanted to thank the sponsor of this video and that is Skillshare. Skillshare right now is offering a free trial of their premium membership to the first thousand people who click the link in the description below. And if you're listening to this, you're probably one of those first thousand people. So go ahead and click the link. But what is Skillshare? You guys probably already know this but <laughs> it's worth repeating. They're an online learning community. They have thousands of courses to choose from for you creatives out there, for you business-minded folks out there. Um, one course I've been interested in a lot recently is called Productivity for Creatives. I don't know if you guys know this about me. I have a family, I have a career, I have a job. This YouTube thing is very much a, a side hustle for me. Um, and then on top of all of that, I like to train and be fast on my bike. So um, with that said, my days are jam-packed. It's important for me to be very productive, very efficient with my time. That's why I've really enjoyed this course, because Thomas really breaks down um, in, in simple terms what it takes to put yourself in a professional mindset and to maximize your efficiency throughout the day. Um, it's been great. There's this course and thousands of others to choose from. So go ahead and click that link in the description. Enjoy the free month of your trial membership. And then after that, I think it's only like $10 a month, a totally good investment. It pays itself back. And uh, with that said, let's get into today's race. And it doesn't take you very long, does it? I mean, you can see the neutral car here in front of you, pulls off, the race flag gets waved, you guys go under the banner and it's on and you immediately flex some muscle, Glenn. Yeah, show him who's boss, bring the fight to him. That's right, I love this, man. And look at the power, I mean, 37 miles an hour into a headwind, right? You guys are seeing those flags on the right with your teammates. So you guys are just totally, like right off the bat, two, this is a two hour race. You're immediately showing the, op the military folks like, hey, this is what's gonna happen today. I hope you're ready for a hard one because I'm gonna make this a hard one. Yeah, exactly. This, was, uh, this wasn't really a plan, but yeah, when once those neutral cars get in front, uh, get, get out in front of us, I can help myself, man. I just have to go. And, and it's a it's a good to fly that flag of like, hey, I'm going to boss this race. It seemed like you were really determined to force a breakaway. But actually, this wasn't the effort that made that happen. Let's let's fast forward a little bit and we'll talk about that. Yeah, let's go. OK, so unfortunately, you end up getting caught, but you, got, you guys don't even let him rest. Like immediately you can see on the right, Glenn, that's your teammate, Martin, from the last video. Yeah, Martin <laughs> and uh, Martin. He attacks on the right. He gets followed. And Glenn, you're like, that looks pretty good. They're all tired from chasing you to begin with from your first attack. So you guys go again right over this riser and immediately fall into rotation. And I want to commend you on how this looks because I don't even know if, did you look back in this attack at all? Yeah, I know what's, nobody was uh, responding when Martin uh, uh, did go. And I uh, just checked uh, if, the, if there wasn't uh, a wheel on my wheel and we just put a head down and uh, yeah, let's, let's ride. Yeah, and this is what it takes guys. So, so, Glenn, 500 watts on the front right now. This is not sustainable, even for a guy like you who's got a ton of power. But this is what it takes to establish a breakaway. You want to crush the spirit of the chasing group, establish that, that, uh, that gap, even if it's, if it's unsustainable like it is right now. Because 
you need to get you know 10, 15, 20 seconds, and then you need to fall into a more sustainable effort and rotation off the front. This is the way it's done, you guys. And with that said, Glenn still doing you know four or five hundred watts on the front right now. Let's talk about your power. For the first 30 minutes of this race, I had to like double check it to make sure it was right. 380 watts normalized for the first 30 minutes of, of a two-hour race. Do you remember this yeah. being that hard? No, man. It was just one of those days, I guess. I had uh, I had good form and I wasn't hurting all that all that much. Yeah, I was surprised after the race I did that amount of power. But if I uh, look at uh, at the images uh, after after it, I can uh, yeah, I know where it where it comes from. I love those days, man. It feels like there's just no chain on the bike. Like you're just you're you're just making all sorts of power and feeling comfortable. And then I'll I'll tease it a little bit. I won't spoil it, but you're still able to pop off almost 1500 watts in the sprint. We're gonna get to that in a little bit. Stay tuned, guys. But for now, you guys settle into this rotation, open up a quick gap on the chasing peloton, and uh, let's fast forward a bit and see how that works out. Okay, so now Glenn, we are most of the way through this race. There's tw uh, 27 kilometers or so left. A group of six, actually a group of seven has bridged across, but your teammate Martin unfortunately got dropped. So now you're by yourself, and you're in this group of nine now, which is like a little bit too big for a cohesive breakaway. What do you think, Glenn? Yeah, uh, we have still a long way to go, but the group of nine is just too big. And yeah. uh, you can wait about uh, you ca you can wait uh, to the g on the games who are starting to uh, to to begin. Exactly. Exactly. That's the same thing that happens here. A group of nine is just a little bit too big for a breakaway. There's always going to be somebody who sits in. There's going to be games like you see right here where people don't want to chase, who people don't want to um, do rotations. And then what happens is one person stops working and then two other people stop working. And then one person attacks. And then it just, be it just completely falls apart. What will end up happening, at least here in our races, tell me if it's any different, Glenn, is there'll usually be a breakaway from the breakaway. If there's a group of like nine like this, there'll usually be a group of three or four that breaks off the front of that to make the, the final selection. Yeah, and, and the shorter you are uh, with, the, with the line inside, uh, the more chance you got uh, there, that there's going to be a break from a breakaway. You, you see guys like this guy in the yellow. Let's talk about this guy in the yellow. So number 26 here, I see him looking back. What, what's going on here, Glenn? Yeah, he's the, favor he's the favorite of the race. Um, this is the strongest guy in uh, in the race, and he's trying to get away because he doesn't have a very good sprint. He has a huge FTP, and he's just want wants to get solo away from the break. And there he goes. <laughs> so t almost 26 kilometers left to go, but a guy like him can make this work. And and guys like him with the big FTP, like you mentioned, they prey on these situations. This is perfect for them. They're like, okay, chaos in this big group of nine. We have a big gap off the front of the peloton like he is is depending on that chaos behind because he doesn't want a proper chase effort right he wants people to be sitting in and all looking at each other that's how he wins yeah exactly and he and it's got to be slow for him to uh, to get away because he's all that snippy he just had have to uh to turn uh, to turn the diesel on and uh, just power away and this is so frustrating because, Glenn, you're su on such good form right now. And I can tell that you're motivated to chase it back. I mean, look at this pole you're taking on the front right now. Super hard effort. And, and by the way, it's not even your championship to win, right? Like, <laughs> you, should be, you should be depending on the other guys in this group to chase him back. Yeah, nobody's reacti reacting. And I, I think that's a bit strange because, yeah, it's not my championship to win. It's on those guys. I want to help him, but they were... Yeah, I have to show some initiative. Oh, and this is the frustrating part to me because as soon as you finish your 500 watt pull, you immediately get counterattacked by this one of the same guys who wasn't helping you rotate to chase back the solo rider to begin with. Um, and he waits until you know the pace slows down to 20 miles an hour after your pull. You immediately get counterattacked. This is so frustrating because this has happened to me on a number of occasions, and this just drives me crazy. Yeah, this is frustrating, and uh, this is isn't gonna work. No. This guy in front of us is in front of us is gone, and uh, all those guys, including me, are gonna lose the race. And even this solo effort, like y you know, you might be thinking, well, he's just gonna go up there and join Yellow. But at this point, Yellow's already got whatever 30, 45 seconds. He's out of sight. So solo bridging to a guy who's up there doing 400 plus watts is um, just not gonna happen. It's a little bit short-sighted. 
And you get some vindication because uh, this guy who ended up going solo off the front, you do end up pulling him back a few kilometers later, which must have felt pretty good. But tell us about him because he's he's a, a pretty young rider, right? Yeah, he's a, he's a young rider. He has he doesn't uh, have uh, very good snap in his legs, but um, yeah, he got some talent, and uh, he just was he was just trying to get away from us. A, a lot of talent, but not a whole lot of experience is, is uh, what I no. saw in that move. Just ride with us and try to get the guy in front of his back because at this way you're not going go you're not going anywhere, man. I used to make this mistake all the time too. Like oh, I'm just gonna solo bridge and do this myself, and you get about halfway there. Best case, you get about halfway there, and you're like, oh crap, <laughs> I've made a terrible <laughs> mistake. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, despite your guys' best effort, like I'm I'm watching this now, and like you guys actually do end up pulling together a pretty cohesive rotation to bring back that solo rider, probably because. He was pegged as one of the strongest riders at the start at the start of the race. Still, I mean, you guys are riding so hard right here, but still unable to bring him back. In fact, he's opening his gap. And, and let's talk about the power of this guy off the front. You were telling me you, you think he's going to uh, land a pro contract next year. Tell us about the power he was making off the front solo. Yeah, he was at 5.2 watt per, k watts per kg. And he's a good time trialist, so he's, uh, he's arrow. He's going fast on the front. There's no way I'm going to bridge solo to him. 5.2 watts per, for, per kg for the, the final 30 minutes of this race. And let me put that number in context. For me, that's about 380, 385 watts for 30 minutes, which is probably not something I've ever done. Maybe I've bumped up pretty close to that number, but never at the end of a two-hour race. <laughs> After riding in the breakaway for 90 minutes before that. So that's what separates riders like me who are more focused on like the sprint and riders like him who are just like, natural born athletes who just have that ability and and glenn and i were laughing about this because it's like both of us were like man secretly jealous that i don't have that 400 plus watt ftp that some riders have it's pretty impressive yeah it's impressive and you got to c congratulate him because it's it's just yeah it's just um uh, i i enjoy that about riders doing that kind of thing it's just talent you know i love yeah. uh i love watching talent on a bike so and Good that's not him. the whole story to winning, too, because he can't just lean on that ability. Um, he waited for that perfect moment to, to really snap it as hard as he could and then to hold that high, that high amount of power when he knew that the group was disorganized behind. So, so good for him on making that happen. Let's fast forward a little bit, see if you guys can catch him. Okay, Glenn, inside of three kilometers to go. Now, unfortunately, despite your best efforts, the leader was never brought back. The race is over for first. Congrats to him on taking the W. You're starting to think about the rest of those podium spots. What's going on? What's going through your mind right now? Yeah, Jeff, I just don't really care about the other places right now. I wanted to win this race. A second or a third place doesn't mean anything to me because I'm not attending the podium anyway. So yeah, again, yeah. this is the military championship. Glenn is police. Yeah. And you can see now the pace line has started to fall apart. The, the attacks have started. People are starting to think about about those podium spots that are maybe important to some of these other guys who are the rest of these riders in this group all military? Yeah, exactly. They're all military. So they should be chasing each other, and you should be getting a free ride. Let's see if that actually plays out that way. <laughs> and it looks like the attacks are kind of starting here. I see this rider on the right looking back. He's really trying to sneak away. That guy in the blue, I would look out for him. I can tell he does not want things to come back to his sprint. Meanwhile, in the rear cam, who, who has been glued to your rear wheel for as long as I can remember, this dude. Tell us about this yeah. dude. Yeah, this dude is just, he's a former pro and he is just huge. And I, you know, you can see it over here. He, If he's on my wheel, he is not getting on a podium because I'm not going to react to the other guys who are sp sprinting away in the final. If this guy wants to attend the podium, then he got to do it by himself yeah. because I'm not going to help it with him. He's got some work to do. Uh, you're, you're trying to keep things glued together, but you're not going to respond to all of these and, and you're not going to be stitching everything back up for this guy behind you who's got an absolute massive sprint and there you go this is a good example of that like i can tell you're looking back right now i don't see a shadow or anything glenn i can just tell you're looking back at him like hey you want second you better chase that down and uh ccc here in the black kit he decides he wants to to go now glenn you're just gonna be following wheels from here on out right yeah i'm not taking initiative because i know if i do i don't got a sprint left and that's what that's my b best uh, chance over here to uh, to get the best possible ranking. I'm uh, 
I can. That rider now is really opening up a big gap inside of 800 meters to go. It doesn't look like he's coming back. No, he's gone. He's He's gone for second. And look who's still on your wheel. That hasn't yeah, changed. It, it's the big guy. I used to race this way. This is frustrating to me. Um, not frustrating. It's just a bad way to race if you want if you want the truth. I don't think waiting and hoping things fall into your favor is a good way to race. It's a good way to lose. In fact, look, here's another rider getting away. He still is waiting. And I used to do the same thing, like I said. I used to just wait until, you know, hopefully it comes back to a field sprint and I can win the field sprint. You really have to take initiative in this sport. Um, it took me a long time to learn that because it doesn't usually fall into your favor. Like, especially when you get into higher ranks of racing, people don't just let a sprinter sit in the whole time until 200 meters to go. And he's kind of hoping, he must be really tired. That's my only, my only guess here because he's a former pro. He should know better. But he's just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally, it, at 130 meters to go, he finally opens it up. And like, yeah, cool. Whatever, 1,800 watt sprint. Actually, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> because you're, yeah. doing, you're doing 1,500 <laughs> watts and he's still just riding away from you looking at you. But yeah. what was that for? Fourth, right? Yeah, it so was like, fourth place. It does, like, he could have made 2,200 watts in that sprint. He still wasn't going to catch that guy in front of him or the guy in front of him or even the guy in front of him so it was like it was going to be fourth because he he just got outplayed and outwitted in the final couple of kilometers by these individual riders so awesome sprint by the way awesome race great power um bum that you you couldn't take down the win and, and uh show those military guys what's up glenn but um still awesome awesome riding nonetheless yeah thanks man i had a blast and I hope you're hungry for, for strope waffles because um, I feel like my audience is going to pull through and we're going to get up to like six, six or 7,000 likes and, and you're going to have to eat, <laughs> eat like 20 waffles on camera, man. <laughs> yeah, I got some endurance training to do then, I guess. <laughs> Good having you on. Thanks, everybody, for staying tuned and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, Jeff. Bye.